Hi, welcome to Chapter 8 Solutions. Today's tip is that quality trumps quantity in your studying. So I've worked with a lot of students who have, say, 8 or 10 or even more GRE books and they get totally overwhelmed. And what they don't realize is that they just need a couple of solid resources and from those resources they need to master the concepts in those books. So for example, if you stick with our manual and the official guide, that will be enough for most students to do well on the math portion of the exam. Don't get a lot of books and then just rush through the problems. Make sure you thoroughly understand all of the concepts before you move on. Now we're going to jump right in to number one. Number one tells us that the measure of angle two is 40 degrees less than the measure of angle one and then we were asked to find the measure of angle one. So the measure of angle two is based on the measure of angle one. So we can make the measure of angle one x and the measure of angle two is simply x minus 40. Remember that a line is 180 degrees. So the sum of the measure of angle one and the measure of angle two is 180 degrees. So we can create an equation of x minus 40 plus x equals 180 degrees. We're going to simplify this left side of the equation to get 2x minus 40 equals 180 and then solve the equation. Remember we're solving for x so we need to do the reverse of the order of operations. So we need to get rid of that which is subtracted from the x so we're going to add 40 to both sides and we get 2x is equal to 220. If we divide both sides by 2 we get that x equals 110 degrees. In this case since we defined our variable to be the measure of angle 1 then x itself is the answer. If you rewrote it, if you wrote it differently and had um, the measure of angle 2 being x and the measure of angle 1 being x plus 40, you would have to add 40 to your final answer because you would have gotten that x is 70 degrees. Okay? So make sure you define your variable and you write down um, whatever it is so that you remember. Number 2. Number 2 um, gives us two parallel lines cut by a transversal. We know that our two lines are parallel because we have a symbol indicating that they are parallel. If the lines simply look parallel but we're not told verbally or given some type of symbol that indicates that they are indeed parallel, then we cannot assume that they are parallel. So these two parallel lines are cut by a transversal. When parallel lines are cut by a transversal, eight angles are formed. All of the large angles are obtuse and those obtuse angles are all equal and all of the small angles are acute and those acute angles are all equal. So here we're told that the measure of angle, u, of angle 1 equals u and the measure of angle 6 equals 2p plus 7. You'll see that one of our angles is obtuse and our other angle is acute. So they are not equivalent. If our two angles are not the same then they are supplementary. Any obtuse angle with any acute angle is supplementary. So that means we can form an equation. U plus 2P plus 7 equals 180 degrees. Now go back and make sure you understand what you're being asked. They simply want to know what P is but they said in terms of U. And that simply means solve for P and you will have U in the answer. So P depends on what U is in every instance. So if we want to solve for p, we need to get rid of the things that are added and multiplied onto the p. So the first things we're going to do is get rid of the 7 and get rid of the u because those are both added on. So if I subtract 7 from both sides, I get u plus 2p equals 173 and then I need to subtract u from both sides. So I get 2p equals 173 minus u and the final step is to divide both sides by 2. So you get 173 minus u over 2 and that answer is B. Number 3. Number 3 shows that we have two intersecting lines that form two sets of vertical angles. Remember that vertical angles are always congruent meaning they have the same measure. So angles 1 and 3 have the same measure and angles 2 and 4 have the same measure. 
We're told that the measure of angle 4 equals 82 degrees. And we are asked to find the difference between the measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 2. The question actually says the positive difference. So that way if we subtract in the wrong order and we get a negative, we know that we have to switch the order that we're subtracting. Okay? So they want the positive difference between the measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 2, which means we need to find the measure of angle 1 and we need to find the measure of angle 2. So angle 2 is simple. It's just 82 degrees because it's a vertical angle with 4. And measures of angle 1 and 2 are actually supplementary. You'll see that they fall along this straight line. So since they fall along a straight line and a line is 180 degrees in measure, the measure of angle 1 is simply 180 minus this 82. It's what's left from 180 degrees once you take into account the measure of angle 2. So the measure of angle 1 is 98 degrees. So to find the positive difference, I have to subtract this from this. So it's simply 98 minus 82, which is 16 degrees. Number 4. Number 4 shows us two lines that appear to be parallel um, and they are cut by the transversal t. We are asked for the value of x given that the measure of angle 3 is x plus 12 and the measure of angle 7 is 2x minus 9. You will notice that these are both acute angles and given parallel lines you would set 2x minus 9 equal to x plus 12 because they're acute angles, so acute angles are always the same when a transversal cuts two parallel lines. Notice I keep saying parallel lines, parallel lines, given parallel lines. They did not give us that these are parallel lines. We do not know that they're parallel lines, even though they appear to be, so the answer is E cannot be determined. Okay? So hopefully you notice that right away, and you didn't do a lot of work and solve for X. Um, but if not, just keep that in mind, even if something appears to be a certain way, you have to be told that it is indeed a certain way. Number five. Number five gives us a straight line with a ray coming out of the line, so two angles are formed. We are told that the measure of angle two is 80 degrees less than three times the measure of angle one. So again, the measure of angle two is based off of the measure of angle one. They are both unknown, but since this one is based off of this one, will let the measure of angle 1 equal x. So the measure of angle 2 is 80 degrees less than 3 times the measure of angle 1. Okay? So 3 times the measure of angle 1 is 3x and it is 80 degrees less than that. Okay? A common mistake is to put the 80 first because it's 80 degrees less than 3x. We say 80 first, but we're actually taking it away from the 3x. Okay? So this one is not correct. Then it asks us for the positive difference between the two. And they tell us that the measure of angle 1 is greater than the measure of angle 2. So the positive difference is simply x minus 3x minus 80. Okay? You have to be careful here. We are subtracting the entire, the measure of the entire angle. Okay? So this actually has to be in parentheses because we are subtracting this entire thing. And I'll show you why that's important. We are actually going to have to distribute this negative to everything in the parentheses, thereby changing the sign on this 80. If we didn't have it in parentheses, we would simply get x minus 3x and then minus this 80. However, it's minus minus 80, which is plus 80. Then we collect our like terms. x minus 3x is negative 2x. To help you remember that, remember there is a coefficient of 1 in front of this x if nothing is written there. So it's simply 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. So negative 2x plus 80. So our answer is B. And that concludes the review of Chapter 8 Solutions. Go ahead and do your problems in the official guide, and remember, review anything um, as necessary. So anything that you didn't get, make sure you go over it. Um, take the time to do so. You'll appreciate it come test day.